start. Hey, good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hyperledger India Chapters event. And today we have Terry Vaughan, um, who is gracefully accepted invitation to speak to this quorum. I know many of you have joined in from across the globe. And today's topic for presentation is minting NFTs with Fabric. So without much delay, let's get started. And we invite our speaker for today, Terry Vaughan, uh, to take over from here. Uh, okay, uh, uh, thanks everyone. And uh, I will do the sharing. Yeah, today's sharing is about the, the fabric. Uh, I, I reused the, the fabric sample chain code in the community. And uh, you can see, uh, maybe, maybe everyone know there's token ERC721. We, we can use this chain code to do a lot of things. I will introduce some, I will introduce uh, my CLI. I will, I will introduce the Minty CLI and apps, and also a RESTful API, and uh, reuse the community chain code, and also some syncing in NFT, because I find some interesting things there. I will, I will show you later. Uh, this is the architect. The, the whole arch the, the whole the whole thing's whole story is here. The IPFS will be the storage backbone, the storage backbone behind our behind our chain code and uh, applications. Uh, here is the here's the requirement before we start. If you want to reproduce the whole the whole the whole codes in your machine, and then the chain code, of course. Ah, okay, full screen. Okay, full screen. Let me let me let me show it in full screen. Okay, now it's now it's in full screen. Okay, let's continue. And then this is very normal for like uh, everyone knows our community, our community, uh, community chain code, and also the the test network will be used here. And then set up. I will do a quick. I I will do a quick. Um, I will do a quick review on the steps, and then I will do a demo on that. So you can see if you need a if you you need a Linux machine and install everything before we start and clone the GitHub here, and then install everything. Uh, the sample code are in. JavaScript, and after installation, we do a we do a link means the Minty CLI command line can be accessed from all passes, and then normally uh, we do the wallet. This is what's different. I I, I will be addressed later. This is what we different from the. Ether, Ethernet, Ethernet programs. We use certificates, means public keys and private keys. And then the config, the config part is a, is a, uh, it's all about the IPFS servers in the backend. You can use, uh, you can use your own IPFS servers. All I'm using the, I'm using an, I'm using an, on this address, I'm using an outside IPFS servers, not in the data, in another data center. 
it's much stable. Yeah, if, if you if you wanted to set up the demo IPF server, sometimes it's a little tricky. And some some data centers doesn't allow us to do that. So better to use this one. You can say this one here. And continue. Here is the chain code. Here's the chain, all the parameters for the chain code we are using. Uh, the channel lamb here. The chain code lamb, the same chain code lamb in the community, and also MSP informations and user IDs. We set it here. And then commands. Commands means cause uh, the cause it's a CLI command line command line applications. So uh, a help was provided. When you see some, uh, when we don't, don't, then we make sure, not make sure uh, what the command is for, and we can use this one. It will be usage and options. And then this is dual mint. Uh, Cause sometimes the, the IPFS doesn't work well, so I, so I, I put almost every command lines and feedback feedbacks here. Uh, this is a mint we will see later. I, I will in the demo. Also we'll be in a demo. And then this is a screenshot. The screenshot shows here. Uh, the usage is simple. We just put We just we just uh, copy and paste, and then waiting for the response. You can see standard. There's a standard standard chain code transactions, and then you will see it. Standard chain code transaction, and then the second one. You can see the feedback. The token ID, I, I marked in blue. The token ID, the, the owner, and also the token URL. Um, the token URL maybe is the unique one in the IPFS server. So this is very important. Uh, I will talk, uh, talk later, the on-chain code and off-chain code. On-chain code is small, very small. Most off-chain code, as we know, in the IPFS server. Actually, it's not only not in the server. The server is only the hash. Actually, it's everywhere. It's in the distributed file system all over the world. But the owner and the token URLs are, are on the chain. And then we see, then we, we after, after we do the mint, we will, we will show what we mint just now. Just like we input the token here, and then the, the, the A is for asset means here. You can see we, we just, uh, Put the token ID and we'll see the transactions and get the response. Uh, the A here, the A here stands for whether we need a base 64 encoded content for the content. You, you can have a look at this. Then we do the transfer. The transfer we are doing is also very simple. Put the token ID here and from, from minter to recipient.
and then you can see the screenshot. The minter we do transfer here, the transfer this token to the to the final, the final owner here. I just put the name final owner for the for the receptor. And then we can see it works. That it transferred. Yeah, we 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 use the the shoe the shoe function again, and we can see the owner address changed. Uh, for front end, I I also I also prepare the rest for APIs for front end. So, so it will be, we can see the UI, not only the command lines here. Uh, only a shoe function is, is, is ready in this demo. Uh, you can see, yeah, this is, What's in UI actually is the same information as we in the command line. And also this is for art for something. The same information, but it looks much easier. Um, the, the whole story is here. Yes. Uh, I, re I, I react to server and uh, also what's what's the response of the transactions during the the browser and also the server something yeah uh, I will do the QA in the QA session just to leave your questions in the in the chat window yeah. And also here you can see the rest for the rest for APIs in CUI or command lines. Yeah, just uh, just uh, just to show it here. Uh, the transfer, also the transfer, the rest for API for the transfer. You can see we do a post method here and give the information, the token ID and from home to home, and then it works. Okay, we come to the, the most exciting part, the troubleshooting part, because when I, when I, when I use the, the chain code in our community, I find some, some, some issues there. Then I find uh, uh, there's a lot, a few things we need to address. The first thing is that every time we use a full full pass to the to the fire, and then it works much better. And also, the first time when I I, I do some configurations in the server, but it doesn't work actually because the data center the data center was forbidden the ports. You can see the ports. 4,001 and 5,001. Normally they are forbidden and we need to open it. And also uh, in the demo, we first uh, I use, uh, I use like something like a plain text fire, like a e-ticket there to mint, mint this plain text fire as the, as the NFT, as an NFT, but actually the same code segments, the same program can be used for pictures and logs. Only we cannot see the, the, the plain text because they are not plain text. So I just mentioned here. We can, uh, I will show you in the, in a screenshot for PNG files means pictures, logs, Uh, here is 
here is this is the ports, the, all the port settings in my server. You can have a look. Uh, you can have a look. I add the, this four, this four. I add these four ports here. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Make sure you have all the ports open. Uh, this is a screenshot for the PNG files. For other pictures, it's the same. You can see the the base forty, the base sixty four part will be very long because it's not a it's not a plain text, but it's a picture, so means it's it's very long. Yes. And uh, here is the same. You can see the IPFS address was created for our logos, fabric logos. Yeah. Um, maybe here is the maybe someone uh, some of maybe some of the questions are also addressed here for the same one because I also found this this things. Course we we are using a for there every NFT for every NFT there is a IPFS in the backend, but for IPFS as we know the CID is the unique identity. In our in our chain code actually not the not the the token ID actually the, the token ID is created by Fabric. But actually, the NFT itself, they need a unique, unique ID in the IPFS. But since comes that if we are using the same parameters or same settings, the CID are the same, even in the IPFS world. That means we can have different token IDs with the same CIDs. That, 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 that's a that's a good question. This is a, we, we need to think about it. So I just put one page here, actually not only one page. You can see here. And also if we are using the same, same like same pictures or same arts, same pictures or same arts, same pictures or same, same other like uh, uh, like text files, pictures, but we are using a different CID version and uh, and uh, SHA 256 or another kind of parameters to generate the C to generate the CID will be different. You can see the multi hash if if a different multi hash or a different CID version was used, even the same picture or same, the same source file will get a different IPFS ID. That's interesting. So make sure, make sure, make sure we, we, are, we are also using the same, same settings for the same thing in our system. Then this is the uh, we will we will go back to see what's on the chain and off the chain data. As I mentioned before, the the on chain data is um, only a few information is on chain data. We cannot save too much as on the chain. Yeah, this is the code segment. Actually, we are using the mint with token URL chain code here. We submit the transaction here. Only three fields are recorded on the chain. The token ID, the metadata URL, which is much important. I marked here, marked in blue, the metadata URL. And then 
we go back, we go into the chain code URC because we are Fabric is a community chain code. It's different from the Bitcoin or Ether, Ethernet. So the owner, we we are always know who is the owner, and we can get the owner client identity. So the minter will we will use from the context in the chain in the chain code context, and then the chain code context we got the we got the ID the min the minter ID and minter ID will come here, and also with the token ID we generated for fabric and also the token URL, which means the URL in IPFS here. So only three fields are on the chain. The other things will be in the distributed file system of IPFS. So there's not too much too much workload or storage workload in the chain code, in the chain, on the blockchain. Okay, this is the, the, the transaction log. We just, just uh, address again for the transaction log. You can see the mentor data address, which is the only the unique address in IPFS if we are using the same setting. And also the mentor address means token URLs in the above. You can see very similar. Uh, the same, not, not only similar, actually the same. Uh, okay, mm, this is this is the, the address of the chain code and also uh, the global NFT project which was started only a few a few weeks ago. Uh, I I already joined the the. I already joined the, the, the it's, it's much complex, not, a, not a like a today's demo, it's a simple one. Um, ah, this is who am I? I yes, I, I, I will address. This is who am I? I, I worked for IBM China for, for, for years and, and then I'm not, now a freelancer and focus on blockchain. And also I, I do some, do some I, I'm a speaker in the global forum of high pleasure, in, also in blockchain security area. Um, let, me, let me show you some, uh, let me show the demos, the, the I, the recording of the demos, you can have a look. And then we are, we are going to the QA session. The demo will, 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 will do a happy pass from the very beginning to the end for what we are talking about today. And you can have a look and have uh, ideas on what, what this demo is doing.
So there is no audio. One can check what is happening here. So Terry, it will be nice if you can speak about what's happening on the recording. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this is means transfer. We do the the owner address. Here you see the owner address. And also, token ID here, owner address here. Then we do exporting. To make it easier, otherwise the command line will be very long. We set the receiver as the final owner. Okay, we copy, copy and paste. Let's transfer. Have a look at the command uh, options and usages. Let's transfer.
paste here. Wait. A transaction comes. Oh, it works. You can token from this address to the final. Then we show again. Show token ID. Here comes the owner become final. That's it. Let's have a look at the UI. We need to refresh the pages. Uh, every time I re refresh the pages, the token ID will become the initial one. Let's replace the initial one with the token ID we just transferred. Copy the token ID here. This is what we transferred. Wait. Ah, uh, here comes. The response is here. Ticket one. Final owner. Yeah, information in it. This is content in base 64 encoded. If it's a picture, the base 64 content will be a very long now in the UI. And this is for the happy demo pass. Okay, I will. Uh, it will be in the QA session. And also I let me put the, the two links here and then we will begin the QA session. I will put the links in the in the chat in the chat. This is the code segment for today's demo. It's a simple one, but we do have a complex one and uh, a lot of guys, community con contributors are involved here. It's a, a let me do a little like a promotion here is uh, the, this one is uh, is a uh, for NFT uh, it's a high pleasure lab pro project and a lot of guys are enjoy are joined and also welcome everyone to join and have a look. Uh, okay. And uh, in the QA session, yeah, you can you can have a have a look at this page. It is a community high pleasure lab project, and in the for the NFT, it's uh, yeah, it's here information here, and then okay. Let's do the, the QA session. Uh, let's, let's do the QA session from the very beginning. Okay, let me, if I miss something, you can just, uh, you can maybe, maybe you can, you can, you can remind me. Okay, let's see what's in the, in the chat window. Full screen, ask question here. Okay. Then let me can see here, 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 here. Ah. 
Uh, uh, so, maybe can maybe I can help you to address the question one by one. Yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. First one, like, does uh, ERC seven twenty one standard supported in hyperledger? Question from Asutosh. Uh, uh, not uh, we. Yeah, it's a uh, we have a uh, the community. We have a uh, community samples in the in the chain code for ERC. 721 and uh, we, we cannot say the standard supported but we can we can use it actually actually the, the demo program uh, is we can also use the demo program for other blockchains means that means i only changed the the chain the chain i only i only modified the the on-chain on-chain steps in the in the application and reuse the, the chain code, uh, chain code generation processes. Other processes for the IPFS part are the same. For 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 like Bitcoin or other blockchain technologies. Yeah. Yeah, and I I also can add like seven twenty one is just some kind of guidelines, some kind of uh, some definition, right? It could be implemented in any language. What the hyperledger fabric. Uh, uh, developer did. They just implemented what the 721 specification provided in Ethereum. They just implemented those uh, standard in a, a chain code. Ah uh, yes, yes, yes. Th that's correct. That, that's yes. correct. correct. Yes, correct. So now, now the next question from Fahad. Uh, Fahad is asking a question. Two question. One question like. Confirming there is no cost of minting NFTs on the Hyperledger platform, unlike it's Ethereum, because Ethereum is a gas fees involved. And second question, can this work for public blockchain type solution where the front end is public facing user interface and the back end is on Hyperledger? So actually he, he went to, he want to ask like, can this work for a public blockchain type solution where the front end is public facing user interface and the back end in a Hyperledger? Uh, the, the first uh, uh, confirming there's no cost. Yes, there's no cost. But for Ethereum, there's cost of some, I, as I know, there's some gas fees in other blockchain technologies. But for Fabric, yes, there's no cost. Yeah. yeah. So, so the second question is, Second question maybe like around like suppose because hyperledger mainly the permission and private blockchain and generally NFTs basically build on the public blockchain. So uh, building on a Ethereum, building on a hyperledger, how it could be exposed or maybe having some kind of public facing interface. That's his question actually. Yeah, yes, that's possible. We can do we can do like this. Yes, that's possible. Okay. A different. Uh, Different UI, but back backend is high plagiar. It's possible, yeah. just and, like and, we are doing. Yeah, correct. And there's another question from Sayy. Uh, he's asking like, what, why, and what's the scenario and condition when we use the hyperledger for NFTs? I Means kind of um, business or use case why we someone should uh, build the NFTs on fabric, hyperledger fabric. I actually because I'm. Because actually, it's uh, from because I'm very familiar with Fabric, so then I think maybe we can do with Fabric. And also, I I see there's a chain code. Someone already contributed the chain code in the exact community example. So I I do it. I this is why I do it. Yes. I, I guess Terry, the question, I, I see a similar question next, right? So probably what they're asking is, in conventional ways, when we mint the NFTs, it uh, it solves the purpose of proving ownership of the NFT, which anybody can access. Now, what is the differentiation that we get over here, or how do we achieve the same things when we build NFTs on Fabric? Um, um, I 
ఫ్యాబ్రిక్లింగ్ <laughs> I, yes you are right it's it's cheaper and also you know what who, who is you 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 who is your partners because in fabric world it's everyone knows who are trading with who yeah, yeah. and there is another question from astur how hyperledger solving duplicate arts with different cids to stop double listing because i think this is a very common common issue in uh, in, in nft world where people say like suppose there are multiple blockchains and maybe one art could be created as an nft on the multiple platforms because all blockchains are not integrated so how the hyperledger will solve this duplicate art problem uh y- yes it's not only for fabric because every everyone who are using the same ipfs this is like why i put a page for thinking this is also i'm dotting um mm. yes but 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 uh, luckily everything can be traced in blockchain world so when when problem comes you will know why the pro- where is the problem so it's a, it's a, it's also acceptable mm, okay and i think there is another question from vikram does it use the account model or utxo model uh, this uh, nft sample you use is is follow the account model or utxo model i think is account model i believe uh ut and a uh, an uh, unspent uh, transaction i think there's some kind of uh, which bitcoin generally follows in the their their tokens uh, token economics uh, it, it, it's it's not it's not utx so uh, you can say it's a account model because the owner address it's uh, actually is uh, x509509 subject uh, subject certi- certificate it's a certi- actually it's a certificate it's a counter you can say it's a similar account model and as i as i remember there is a utxo sample chain code in the community fabric samples you can have a look there it's quite different uh i just have a look utxo means uh you still have s- it's not it's not an nft the whole yeah, yeah whole right, right, two right. Con- yeah two, two, two concepts yeah utxo is not it's not a, it's not a unique actually utxo is different yeah another like how do we ensure anonymity and constability of an nft ownership fabric interface uh, interface yes in, interface implemented the, the interface is implemented in the chain code i doesn't touch the chain code but you can have a look at the chain code part the chain code is the same chain code in the community examples all follow the erc 7721 erc 721 in interface yeah. but erc721 enumerator as well or just erc721 base into operation into operation uh assign all okay uh there there's there's no into uh, assign all in the demo there's no into operation with grc with grc yeah it's only in fabric the demo is very simple only in fabric but uh but we can add we can add a code segment for ethereum ethernet
how do we ensure the confidential NFT owner with fabric? Uh, this is come to the same question when fabric when fabric is created. Fabric is like as I as I know, fabric is like uh, everyone know who is trading for the certificate. Uh, the certificates are, are almost clear, unless you use uh, unless you use uh, identity mix MSP. Maybe 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 you can use identity identity mix MSP for 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 some confidential reasons, but for fabric it should be. Everyone knows who owns who owns the NFT. UTXO. Okay, UTXO. Yes, UTXO is uh, is for yeah some okay UTXO is for yes yes UTXO is for fungible tokens only yes for NFT there's no UT U, U, UT UTXO. Account model. Let me put the questions on the screen. Is account model slower than UTXO? Um, normally, the the bottleneck is not in blockchain, as I know. I see the bottleneck actually in the IPFS. Means IPFS is uh, uh, sometimes we will wait a few a few seconds for the IPFS CID. So maybe maybe that's that's a problem. Can we uh, next question? Can we can we not use the certificate series number rather than the C lamb, the common name? Yes. Yes, you can use it. Um, yes, we, we can use common name here, but the, the yes, 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 it's okay. You can use the common name here. Equally project. Equally project. Uh, Maybe maybe we can. Uh, I'm I'm not sure for 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 one one five five. So uh, I'm not uh, sure for this. Yeah, yeah actually asking her is there any ERC double one double five token sample? So already community have a similar ah. chain code for like we have for NFT. I I said the link already. Yes yes I I see it yeah yeah here the link is here yeah we 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 also have a sample there but it's not today's topic yes. Uh, looks like uh, we we have all the questions are here now. All the questions are here now. Yeah, is there any other questions? You can just uh, leave a message in the in the chat window. Uh, okay. Uh, you can you can reach me at the I will put my email address here. And also you can reach me at the at the GitHub, yeah. At the GitHub. Yeah, this is my email address. If you just drop drop me an email, I will reply when I see it. Yes. Just uh, drop me an email. Yeah. Oh, oh, junior is come. Yeah, Junior. Junior, junior Golden is come. Thanks, Junior. Yeah, indeed, it was great presentation. Thank you, Terry.
Yeah, thank you. Great presentation. So if there are no more questions, I would like to quickly remind our audience that there are a couple of opportunities that you can participate. So there is Hyperledger Mentorship Program. The deadlines for submissions is March 9th. So you have three more days to submit your ideas. And um, there is also mentee opportunity opening up. Once the mentorship projects get, um, get shortlisted, if you are interested in, in internship opportunities, the official Hyperledger internship, which is provided by Alenak Foundation, you can apply through those programs and you can join them. So deadlines for this is, is next three days. So please make sure you utilize this time and propose your ideas. And there is the links for that on can be found on chat. There is also another opportunity for you for which uh, you can again propose your ideas if you would like to as a group and participate in building a project. So that's Hyperledger Challenge. You can find the website information about that as well on the chat. And yeah, the Hyperledger, those who are proposing to Hyperledger Challenge, if you don't have a mentor, we can help you find a mentor. And if you propose your problems statements before 8th of this month, March, we, you are also eligible to propose the same project to mentorship program as well. And if even if you don't have a mentor, we will help you get a mentor from the community. That's regarding the challenge. Please make use of these opportunities and we look forward to having you in our next sessions. So yes, we will paste the meeting recording on the YouTube soon after this call. You will find more information on the Hyperledger's YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Hyperledger Foundation's LinkedIn page or maybe Hyperledger India chapter's LinkedIn page. We will be updating you about next events. And also don't forget to join the Discord channel. So Hyperledger recently moved the official channel from Rocket Chat to Discord. So if you have not still joined, please join the Discord and you will find all the community discussions happening on the Discord channel. So let me share the LinkedIn page link as well. So that's the wiki and that's the LinkedIn page. So once again, thank you. Uh, thank you, Terry. And audience, if you have more requests or if you need more detailed session on the NFT itself, please feel free to reach out and we are happy to again get in touch with Terry and request for one more session. And looking forward to your feedback. Thank you. Thank you.